Do you have a New Year's resolution? Uh, my New Year's resolution is uh, to give up all things boring and anything that doesn't gouge my eyes out with excitement. Like, there's been like two or three days lately, that, like in the last year, that were boring. I'm just trying to avoid that for this coming year. <laughs> Hi, welcome back to the Epically Later show. This episode we have Kevin Spanky Long. Kevin's skating is really spontaneous. I don't think he feels that kind of pressure that other skaters feel. He's gonna just ride some spot and just try something until he lands it. He's doing a trick because I think he's having fun. And you can see that in the rest of his life too, the way he lives and stuff. Everything's everything's just right now, like everything's right in the present. So today we're gonna go into Spanky's apartment and you can see for yourself how he lives. Well, I'm just gonna like get a couch, maybe some like pictures or something. <laughs> maybe get a bed, like a proper bed. I don't know. The girls are working on it. Where'd you get this giraffe? <clears throat> I got that from the Fairfax swap meet. That's Reginald. What? His name. Reginald? Yeah. This, this is the original pizza of trust. How long's that been there? How long do you think it's been here? Like a month and a half? Month and a half. Your dad tries to give you furniture? Yeah, he, he's like, my dad's like uh, constantly working on a million different projects at once. Like he gets these ideas and then he's like, I want an old bus and I'm gonna like make it all nice and then we're gonna like go on family trips and stuff with the bus. But it's like all, like all this kind of stuff like that. It was my great grandfather's chair. He was, he was a barber. I guess he still has all the books and stuff that my great grandpa had, like with the styles of cuts and the, and the scissors and everything. No way. But he was afraid that I was gonna like sp spill wine all over everything and stuff. The revelation is, I mean, it's just in the blood, man. It's yeah. something to do with Irish. I mean, it's an innate fucking thing. He's ADD, like his old man. Uh, it's just <laughs> part of it. They used to put a block of wood under my chair because I was so tiny, and they thought that was going to calm me down. No way. I was freaking off the wall. I was, I was... And so I would take him to like Safeway, he would skate with JT or his other buddies. He's going, Dad, I gotta land this trick, I gotta land this trick. And they're like, that's fine, but mom's cooking dinner, you know, so we gotta get home. And, and he wouldn't, he'd just go, I gotta land this trick. And I'd call home and say, hey, we're gonna be a little late. And he would sit there and sweat and work at doing this trick. And then he would make the trick. And then I'm like, okay, we're out of here. We're going, you did it, finally, you know? And he says, I gotta do it again. And that's Kevin. Well, you gotta tell me what happened. Well, um, I lost the keys. Good. And then, um, my motorcycle was parked in front of it, and so I, I had to, and I had to get some shit out. So, how'd you lose the key? Well, the, the keys were like in my bag. I usually carry yeah. around like a little black bag like this. That's your like your purse. Yeah, sort of, but I mean, it's just a black bag with my stuff. <laughs> and then what happened to the keys? Well, there, there was. That's like a good plan, you know. Yeah, it didn't fail until the, the one of the bags blew out. It was like a thinner one like this. And with those, you got a double bag sometimes. Oh, the little man purse? The little yeah. deli bag, bodega? Usually he carries it, but then I've seen him kind of like progress into just strapping it around his neck. I guess it's literally like one of those situations if his head wasn't screwed on either, he'd lose that, but now he's got a bag around his neck. If I could pick a lifestyle like that, I would go with his, because it's, 
It's got to be so stress-free. I mean, think about it. How many times he will flake on something, spur the moment. You could get the dude to go do something, knowing he probably has prior engagements, but like, Spanky, let's go jam at the house. You know instantly he's flaking on someone for dinner. And this was funny. When you meet someone as a little kid, you always picture them as a little kid. And I hate to say it, the dude's 22, and he's still a little kid. How long have you done Spanky for? Years. Like, yeah. I met him, Paul, Mikey, all them, like, going to the valley, so five years. No, they wouldn't even sponsor him. It was like on Egg Board Shop. I totally remember it. It was like, I remember the Gap. I was shooting photos. It was um, that song, Santa Monica Blue Gap, the Pond Gap. Mm -hmm. And Mikey Taylor was trying a nolly flip. But anyways, there was this kid and he's sitting there and he's frontside flipping it, like good style and everything. And I was like, yeah, what's his name? And they're like, Spanky. He's a beast. It's different now, like now, like he's kind of more grown up. We became like really good friends. But back then it was like, like I'm this like druggy guy and you're like a little kid. So like we really don't have much in common. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, this, I don't know, it was different back then. Spanky though, this is it's a funny t it's funny how Spanky turned out. Cause I'm like, I always like I said, I would be smoking, drinking, and just be wilding out, blazing bitches and fucking. They'll just look at me like, oh damn, like because they wasn't really doing none of that shit. They were just Spanky young, to always talking about skating. Yeah, Spanky, Paul, Mikey, Devin, Callaway, all them cats. Six twenty three, <laughs> what? In the morning, and we've been skating all <laughs> night long. Hook him up, hook him up, give him a little dip. Give him a hug, give him a tight squeeze. Uh, uh, Boy, what, what's wrong? You scared? You a virgin? I'm not scared. <laughs> now when I see Spanky in the ball getting twisted, I'm like, ah, I got you a drink, what you want? It's just funny, you know? It's just like, you know, people grow up, you know? I guess City Stars was kind of falling apart, mm -hmm. and he had some offers to ride for Toy Machine or something like that, and I just kind of told him, like, you should ride, you should just ride for us, you know? It's way better. <laughs> and he, and he, he knew what was right. You had to convince him for a while though, right? Yeah. I was going on that Baker tour to Australia, but I wasn't riding for Baker yet. I was trying to figure out if I was going to ride for them or Toy Machine. Like, the whole time we were staying at Dustin's house, and that pretty much was the thing that pressured me on going on Baker, which I'm glad I did, but he was just torturing me the whole time, like making me feel really bad for even questioning riding for Baker. What the fuck is wrong with you, man? Like, <laughs> like you know how Dustin is just like, you staying in my house? Like, what? What's what? What's the question here? Like, you ride for us, and basically, like by the end of it, I heard like you ride for us so many times. I was like, all right, like I can't say no to that, especially to a young lad who's never been on a <laughs> skate tour with one of people he's looked up to and he's basically calling him a fucking asshole. Yeah, he went from being a, a baby to being a full-blown, jaded fucking hipster. But he also doesn't take this whole thing that seriously, you know? He's, he, I think, recognizes it and is really grateful, which is refreshing. Yeah. So it's a free life with a lot of wonderful travel and great opportunities to mm -hmm. hang out with another amazing bros and you know travel the world with your friends. He could lose the yeah. he could lose everything and he wouldn't know. He doesn't care, and yeah. that's what's good about him. He cares about the right things. 